welcome. First of all, welcome. My name is Daniel Simmons. I lead the Office of Energy Efficiency and Renewable Energy, which I guess is an open question. It's like, okay, well, if we're going to take some pictures, we'll take, we'll take off my badge. We'll look presentable, or at least do a better job of looking presentable. Um, what does energy efficiency and renewable energy have to do with, with uh, plastics recycling? And uh, it's one, because plastics are awesome. I don't think I don't think I need to necessarily say say more. They obviously plastics can result in greater uh, energy efficiency, food efficiency, a whole number of wonderful things. We just know that there are some challenges with plastics. I was recently in California, and I I asked uh, uh, the uh, woman who was traveling with me to help me out. It was like, hey, can you get me a um, can you get me a water bottle because I'd been coughing and I was going to have to talk. And she's like, yeah, they don't have any. And uh, I'm like, okay, I. I hear you, California. I hear your concerns, um, and this is why we're this is why we're doing this is because plastics. The problem with plastics is not that they are bad, but because they are so good. And how do we make them better for the future? We were there at, at a um, X Lab Innovation Summit that was showcasing a lot of the work that's going on at the national laboratories in terms of biomanufacturing, and this is one of the areas that I think that we are very excited about. At least the, at least I am, because those are what one of my offices that report to be talk about uh, works on is bioenergy and bioproducts and what can we do with biomanufacturing to make plastics better for the future to make them more inherently recyclable as well as our advanced manufacturing office to improve manufacturing overall so we are very excited about this opportunity and uh, with that with that excitement I'll uh, I'll hand it off to my uh, to my boss um, the undersecretary of energy Mark Menzies thank you Well, thank you, Dan, uh, for the introduction, and, and thank you for the excitement uh, that you have for this occasion. Um, I, too, bring excitement to, to this occasion. Um, you know, years ago, um, I read a book, uh, I think it was entitled Earth Without Us. It was written by Alan Weiss, I believe it is. These are not in my prepared remarks, so you might have to Google this afterwards. Uh, but he wanted to write a book about whether or not we had so contaminated the earth that if man just simply disappeared, would earth be able to recover or not? It turns out that the earth uh, is self-healing uh, and that it is, but he focused back then, and this was uh, uh, probably 15 years ago or so, he focused back then on all the hydrocarbons uh, that we had, the plastics, even back then, you know, in the ocean. Had we so produced so many hydrocarbons? So he began uh, interviewing all the experts, and so he came uh, to the uh, <clears throat> Uh, molecular biologists uh, and got to talking about the hydrocarbon and you know the biologist says well you know he says the hydrocarbon I know you're really concerned about it he says but you know it's a simple molecule actually he says in terms of um, evolutionary biology he said no oh, there's probably some organisms today you know that can actually break down the hydrocarbon uh, and indeed he says um, probably within 100,000 years, uh, you'd be able to easily uh, decompose all the existing, hi existing hydrocarbons. So he downplayed it as some type of thing that you couldn't solve. So that left uh, an impression. In fact, he said um, the big breakthrough, evolutionarily speaking, was in breaking down the cellulose. He said, now that is one tough structure to break down. He says what the termites have accomplished uh, and the beetles, that really is quite an accomplishment, if you will. So the challenges that we have today, again, you just have to read the reports. You know, we have plenty of hydrocarbons everywhere. They're in our oceans. They're now in our atmosphere coming down. The biodegradable plastics, you know, come back down. So um, why not deal with it? Why not bring all of the intellectual power that we have at our at our labs together with industry that likewise has been establishing um, initiatives to address this problem head on. Um, with the shale revolution, uh, we have now really changed uh, geopolitics. We have changed the fact that the U.S. is now the leading producer of oil and natural gas. This is a great thing for world peace. It completely undermines the powers of the OPEC country. It brings it brings choices to countries that have become dependent on Russia for natural gas, for example. Secretary Pompeo was just in Belarus over the weekend, and he told the uh, Belarusians, we can provide you uh, the oil and natural gas you need. You no longer are dependent on Russia. With this shale revolution, we have an abundance 
of uh, domestic uh, natural gas uh, and the creation of hydrocarbons. We need to put it to work. You have seen um, the economic recovery under this administration. We are now building uh, cracker units in the United States really for the first time since the 70s. This is truly historic. This is remarkable. And yet the naysayers uh, will tell you, you are creating plastics. You are cr creating these products that find their way into the oceans, into the atmospheres. And so now we have a plan to deal with it. We have gotten support not only from industry, who has been leading the charge in this for years, because they know plastics is good. It is a great product. A lot of the products that plastics replace have a higher carbon footprint than plastics themselves. Look what they are doing for medical technologies, for safety and vehicular construction. The world needs plastics. It's a good thing. However, gone should be the days when we create new materials that give an environmental legacy to our children and grandchildren. We, too, are beyond that. So we got together and decided how is it that we can join with industry and our labs <clears throat> and get the support from the Hill um, to let's address these issues just head on. Let's just have a great challenge. And so uh, we um, uh, began the, the pla we announced the plastics um, innovation uh, challenge. And this is, it's not to figure out a world without plastics. It's a way to figure out a world with plastics and that we can deal with them environmentally and yet still get all the benefits that plastic gives to us. We do not want to go back to the days when we have to use, you know, iron, steel, or glass, or other products that simply are not nearly as efficient and, and um, have a much bigger carbon footprint. So um, we believe that it's going to be innovation that is going to get us through this. We have targeted a complete um, circular economy on how to deal with the plastics. So we're going to address the problem head on, plastics already in the atmosphere. We're going to figure out ways to collect it, um, how to uh, recycle it, how to upcycle it. Uh, let's get together and design organisms or processes uh, that can help break them down so that they have shorter lives within the environment. And then it's important that we push it out commercially. The industry is here. Um, the ways that we're going to develop, the new sciences that we're going to develop, and the new materials that we're going to develop, they need to be commercially viable. And so that's where we're bringing together the resources of the department together with industry to where we can focus on each of these elements in the process and we can create uh, solutions in each of those instances. Uh, so that's what I'm so excited about uh, here. It's something that we believe in uh, very passionately. I think you will, you have seen some of our prior announcements. Uh, and so I think that uh, today, uh, with our great partners with the American uh, Chemistry Council, uh, with their leadership, with their uh, scientific knowledge, with their drive to make sure that we continue to make um, strong contributions to our economy, to drive in jobs, uh, and the products of today and tomorrow will work together, and I'm truly excited about signing the MOU with you today, Chris. And thank you very much uh, for your members uh, being here today and for your uh, leadership, and congratulations, too, uh, on your recent uh, elevation to the uh, uh, to president. Thank you. So I got to say, um, really kind of disappointed in the level of energy and enthusiasm <laughs> here in the room. Um, but so I really, I really appreciate um, uh, Assistant Secretary Simmons and Undersecretary Menzies' leadership on this, and it's really a continuation of the relationship that the American Chemistry Council has had with uh, the Department of Energy on a number of different issues. And you know, and given my vast three months of experience, I've got a long list here. I can relate to you all the good things that have happened that I myself have had nothing to do with. Uh, but it's the Advanced Manufacturing Office, the Vehicle Technologies Office. The Reducing Embodied Energy Decreasing Emissions Institute, uh, the Inv Institute for Advanced Composites Manufacturing Innovation, um, so that uh, plastic and polymer composites can play a role in achieving fuel economy standards. So there's a long history here of AACC and the department working together. I'm really excited to leverage that relationship that we've had for a long time here and uh, work together on plastics innovation in this MOU because we think that there's a tremendous opportunity going forward in regards to uh, recovering more of our plastic resources. And this uh, concept, as you said, circular economy and sustainability 
and uh, building circular solutions for how we design, use, and reuse uh, plastic products. And it's a key driver for our members uh, in the business of chemistry, but it's a key priority for us is the American Chemistry Council going forward. So, you know, we already have in place numerous partnerships throughout the plastic supply chain, the plastics value chain, and we need to transform our industry and change our business models in terms of we have we operate. And this is going to help us accelerate that innovation, use that word. And I think that's uh, really important in terms of energy efficiency, in terms of how we conserve our resources, as well as how we strengthen environmental outcomes. And so we're really excited to work with you. Um, and I wanted to give you a few examples of what we think are some of the benefits of, of moving forward, as I said, in terms of looking for a fundamental transformation in, of our industry, uh, designing better products for better recyclability, uh, collecting more of our post-use plastics, deconstructing or breaking them down, as you said, upcycling them, and uses raw materials for new manufactured products uh, of higher value, and finally, of uh, making advanced uh, use of advanced technologies so we can commercialize them and we can scale them going forward. And uh, you had mentioned the environmental benefits of doing this. I think that this is really where the key is, and this is where our members are moving forward, of doing more th with less. And the idea that plastics, um, because of their properties, are very strong and lightweight. So if you talk about lightweight in vehicles, uh, we can go further on a gallon of gas uh, and help reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Plastic insulation for buildings, for houses, uh, warmer in the winter, cooler in the summer, of course. Uh, plastic packaging allows us to ship uh, more in each package, again, reducing fuel, fuel use and greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, you mentioned the benefits of plastics in regards to alternative substances. So we're talking about, uh, in the case of some other substitutes, you're talking about an environmental impact four times higher than that of plastic. If you're talking about greenhouse gas emissions, that's two times higher. So you talk about food waste and the prevention of food waste. 31% of food in the United States is wasted and ends up in a landfill, and that's responsible for about 18% uh, of methane emissions from landfills. So uh, we have a chance to tackle all of those issues by uh, working on plastics innovation together. So we're really excited about uh, what, we're, what we're doing here. And it's really important because right now, for example, if you talk about plastic packaging, only 13% of packaging actually gets recycled. 70% of that ends up in landfill. So quite honestly, um, our industry working in, with our partners in, in the government, we didn't need to do much better. And we've committed to do that. And we've committed by 2030 to make sure that all plastic packaging in the United States is either recyclable or recoverable. And by 2040, our goal is to make sure that that actually happens, that it's actually recycled or recovered. And so we look forward to working with you on this project and moving forward. Uh, our members have already made significant commitments in this regard. There's over 35 projects that have been announced in the last couple of years uh, of about a billion, uh, excuse me, $4.2 billion worth of investment that will be happening going forward on um, technology that will help us keep out of landfills about 6 billion pounds of plastic packaging. So we're really excited to work with you, excited to send, uh, um, work on the MOU and, and move ahead so the United States can continue, as you said, to be innovate and be a global leader in advancing the circular economy through expanded technologies and innovation. So I appreciate the opportunity to be here and to work with all of you going forward. Thank you.